good everyone welcome back to the um the 14th episode of this course on physics for ss2 and in this episode we are going to be dealing with the application of light waves now light is applied in a very um, huge variety of instruments and machines like your projector the simple camera and even the knowledge of light waves is also applied in the functioning of the human eye we are going to be exploring all these applications see you I want you to watch this video to the end so as to learn as much as possible. The first application of light waves that we'll be dealing with today is the simple lens camera. Now, the simple lens camera consists of a light proof box with a converging lens in front and a light sensitive film at the back. The function of the lens is to focus images of the object to be photographed onto a light sensitive plate or film. There is a provision for adjusting the distance between the lens and the film. So that the object is in front, the object in front of the lens can always be sharply focused on the film, and the um, distance between um, the 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 lens and the film can be adjusted by making use of bellows or focusing rings, which are used to focus the objects on the film. As you can see, this is a diagram of the camera, and this is the um, film spool, which is the um, light sensitive portion of the camera that film spool holds the film which is the light sensitive camera part of the camera and now this um the light enters the film through a shutter so when the shutter opens light passes through it when it closes light is um kept away from the film because the film must not be exposed to light for a long period of time only for a very short period of time so that the image can be formed on the light sensitive material now at the front of the camera from the from the um, right we have the lens system, which are a group of lens that um, that uh, refracts the light rays before it enters the camera. Then we also have the diaphragm, we have the aperture, and this is basically what a camera is composed of. Another application of light rays is the um, working principle of a slide projector. Now, a slide projector is an instrument for projecting on the screen an enlarged image of a transparent object. Now, that object is called the slide. Now there are different parts of the slide projector. You have middle, you have the powerful light source, you have the condenser, which um you then you have the slide carrier, you have the projection lens and the screen. The um powerful light source is to illuminate the objects, then the condenser is used, it consists of two plenoconvex lenses which collect the light from the um, light source and concentrate it onto the side slide. So that slide, remember that the slide is the object that you want to project. For example, if you are project, if you are um, trying to project a um, document, so that document which you put in the slide carrier is called the slide. Then next, we also have the slide carrier, which is a framework in which the slide is placed upside down. The reason is that anytime it, we talk about lenses and convex lenses, we often produce inverted images. So if we are going to create an ob an upright object, an upright image, we need an inverted object and vice versa. Then next we have the projection lens placed near the slide, which produces a real and um, enlarged and inverted image of the slide and focuses it on the screen. Then finally we have the screen, which is usually white, which receives the ray. And this ray, this um, this ray is received upright. While this might look strange, the human eye is also an instrument that is representing the application of light waves. Because when we talk about the function of each of the parts of the eye, they exhibit properties that um, help us understand and demonstrate the functions of light. Now, the human eye is consisting of the cornea, consists of the aqueous humor, the iris, the crystalline lens, the ciliary muscles, the retina, the optical nerve, the yellow spot, the blind spot, the sclerotic layer, and other parts. But these are the major parts that are in the eye. Now, your cornea is a thick transparent bulge in the front part of the eye that protects the covering of the eye. So it is the white part of the eye you see when you look at somebody's eye. Then the aqueous humor it is the transparent liquid that is just behind the, the cornea. And the, it's between the cornea and the lens. And the vitreous humor is a jelly-like liquid between the lens and the rest of the eyeball. Then you have your iris. The iris is, between, is, is, rather, is behind the cornea. And the iris is the part that gives the color of the eye. 
so for those of for those people who are blue eyed it means they have blue iris those who are black eyed they have black iris and so on and so forth so they have the crystalline lens and this is the major part of the eye that refracts the light rays that come from the environment into the eye and focuses them on the, re on the retina so as we're saying the retina is the light sensitive area of the eye it consists of a group of cells that are sensitive to light and the image formed is actually inverted but it is made upright when it gets to the brain and it gets to the brain by the passing of the optical nerves so the optical nerves lead from the retina you can see this in this diagram you have the retina you have the yellow spot which is the most light sensitive part of the eye and then from there it goes to the optical nerve where it leads to the brain so the brain has an optical loop which um, kind of processes the light rays and light signal that comes from the retina so when it processes it it sends the image back to the eye and um, rather so and this is what we interpret as vision the eye has one property which distinguish from most other optical instruments and um, things that apply light light um, and behavior and that is the ability to accommodate now this accommodation is the ability of the eye to alter or adjust the focal length of its lens so as to form clear images of objects at different distances on its retina so this adjustment is brought about through the action of the ciliary muscles so basically what it means is that when you adjust the shape of the lens of the eye by the optical muscles <laughs> you are, you'll be able to um, see objects positioned at different distances from the eye so that is the function of accommodation <laughs> have you ever closed your eye and tried viewing an object in front of you you notice that that object appears to be slightly displaced to one side either to the left or to the right now but if you try to look at an object from both eyes you see that it appears to have a central um, image now the reason for this is the binocular vision because our eyes are slightly spaced from each other so each views of an object forms a slightly different um, um, image from a slightly shifted position so the images of the object falling on the retina are not exactly the same and the right eye sees more of the right side while the left eye sees more of the left side but the reason why we can see an object in the, in a centralized way is because of the binocular vision aside its abilities the light the eyes also have their defects now the defect of the eye is when there is an issue with the process of um, transmission reflection and refraction of light from the external environment into the retina so sometimes this can be in the case where the light rays are not properly refracted and or maybe they are not able to be positioned directly on the retina so this in this case is called a refractive error now there are two types of refractive errors there are long sightedness and short sightedness now i want to talk about long sightedness you have um yeah, it's, it's the process whereby um, the light rays are positioned behind the retina so and it can be corrected by using a um, convex lens which um, can bring the light rays forward till they get to the retina so another defect of the eye is short sightedness where the eyeball is too long so in this case the light rays do not get to the retina so that means they um, converge before, um, in front of the retina so and the question of this is you can make it of a concave lens a concave lens which um which refract the rays to down um, them make them get to the retina so these are the two um, refractive errors and their corrections now let's talk about a calculation on how to solve the defects of the eye and one of these calculations for solving the defect is um this example we have a short sighted man cannot see clearly objects beyond 90 centimeters from his eye how can this defect be corrected so in this case we have the defect of short sightedness is corrected by the use of a diverging lens so in this case you must know that the image must appear to be at 90 centimeter so that would be the um the um virtual um, position of the image and it is negative because this is a um, concave lens concave lens so a concave lens only has a negative um, image distance because the images are always virtual now the u that the, the the object distance will be at infinity because that is the um that is the normal far point for, of of an eye so basically you have using the lens formula you have one by f equals one by u plus one by u when you substitute your values you'll be able to get your the focal length so when you calculate that uh, focal length is calculated as minus 90 
so what this means is that we are making use of a convex lens a, a concave lens of of um focal length of 90 centimeters another instrument which we're talking about here is the compound microscope now a compound microscope is used to produce a higher magnification than that obtained by a simple microscope so basically if you, don't, if you haven't heard of a simple microscope it's just your um, normal magnifying glass so it just consists of a convex lens which is used for magnifying objects but a compound microscope has two convex lenses and these are arranged in such a way that the lens nearer the object which is known as the objective lens has a smaller and um, focal length than the lens which is closer to the eye which is known as the eyepiece or ocular lens which has a larger um, focal length now basically it's um the objective lens produces a magnified inverted and real image of the object while the eyepiece is adjusted until um, the the image of the object of onto the image of the objective lens falls at a distance nearer to it than its principal focal um, its principal focus so basically when it's when that kind of image falls at such a point then it can it can produce a magnified but virtual image of another instrument we're talking about is the astronomical telescope now an astronomical telescope is used in viewing distance objects such as the stars and planets now the astronomical telescope uses two converging lenses which are the objective lens and the eyepiece but in this case the objective lens has a longer focal length where the eyepiece has a shorter focal length in normal adjustments the objective lens and the and the um, eyepiece their focal lengths converge that is when they are at the same position so this is called the normal adjustment when the astronomical telescope has the two lenses and their focal lengths coinciding at the same point but if it's not in this position then it is not in normal adjustment now basically the um, astronomical telescope the objective lens collect the parallel rays, parallel rays from a distance object forms a real inverted and diminished image at the principal focus then the eyepiece is adjusted until the, until the image of the object falls at a point nearer the eyepiece than its focal length so because of this the eyepiece can now form a magnified and virtual image of the um, image of the objective lens and basically this telescope produces an inverted image but it's this this is actually a disadvantage in most cases and it owes its magnifying power to the fact that the angle subtended at the eye by the final image is much larger than that subtended by the distant objects another type of telescope we can talk about is the galilean telescope and this time around it uses a convex lens of a long focal length as the objective and the concave lens of short focal length as the eyepiece now the two lenses are mounted so that they have a common axis with the distance between them equal to the difference between their focal length and this in this condition the galilean telescope is seen as being in normal adjustment and the objective collects collects parallels from a distant object to form a real inverted image whereas the um these rays are actually converging at converging to this and principal focus before they converge they are intercepted by the diverging lens which causes them to diverge and emerge as a parallel beam so in this case it's called this this telescope forms a virtual erect and magnified image now the magnifying power of a telescope is given by the by the um, ratio of the focal length of the objective to the focal length of the eyepiece that's the focal length of objective divided by the focal length of eyepiece that is for a galleon